Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Skitcher Chef showing you an international recipe. I want to go and make sure and say hello to everyone who's here. Hello, Priya. My friend Priya is always there. Everyone else, join in when you can. Um, this is going to be a really quick and easy recipe. It's a kid-friendly recipe. Uh, it's from Romania which is, you know, I'm always trying to introduce you guys to different cultures. Um, I do want to give you a little bit of information, a little bit of background about the recipe. Um, I have my tablet here, uh, so I could go ahead. Um, it's not my own culture, so please understand. Um, I have to read it a little bit. I just don't know this off the top of my head. But it's a very traditional dish in countries like Romania and Bulgaria, and there is some religious uh, significance to it. So this is the Orthodox Christian Church of that part of Europe. And it's generally served at Christmas and during the first day of Lent, and also for liturgy services. When there's a death, um, any kind of special occasion, it's, it's eaten. Now, it's also eaten in Greece, but in Greece, it has different significance. So it doesn't have the religious connotations in the Greek version. In the Greek version, it's, um, it's rooted in Greek mythology, but I'll go into to that later. But before we get started on the recipe, I wanted to give you some new things that are going on at the Schizo Chef so you can make sure to be prepared. Um, first of all, this is not just a food blog, although that's mostly what you get. Um, it's also a travel blog, and I'm going to be really expanding that part of it. So every Tuesday, I forget Tuesday is going to be my live day. Every Tuesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to be live sharing with you uh, travel tips to help you plan your travel more efficiently and on a tighter budget. Also, um, just giving you highlights about different locations you might want to consider for your next vacation. So be, I'm going to schedule it right after this because it's just something new. And be sure to tune in to, uh, Tuesdays at 8.30 p.m. for travel information. Um, another thing I'm going to be doing is I'm adding spice kits to my site for you. So one of the things, the most common comments I get on my recipes is, oh my gosh, that looks so delicious, but I can't get this ingredient or I can't get that in ingredient. And I'm trying to put together a box that's going to have the things that's most difficult for the average person to find who lives in other parts of the country. But some ingredients that to me, I consider basic because it's just the supermarket down the road. Other people, I'm always surprised. They can't find it. So I want to know what is that hard to find ingredient that you've been looking for and you can't find in your local area. Or maybe you know where to find it, but it's an hour's drive away from you and you don't have time to drive an hour to find one ingredient. Let me know what they are and I'm going to be putting together these amazing spice kits so that you guys can order it and that way it's so much easier. Please keep in mind these are all going to be uh, shelf stable products. I'm not uh, sending you guys any fresh ingredients. So I'm sorry if you can't find a fresh pomegranate, I, I won't be able to help you. But any kind of dry good, bottled good, um, going to be putting together for you. So I hope you'll enjoy them. Okay, so let's get started. Um, today um, is a Romanian dessert. Um, snack. One of the things that's in it is pomegranate. Okay. Now pomegranate, I was really surprised. A lot of people are, don't know that you can de-seed pomegranates yourself. I was talking to someone the other day and they, and she always buys the pre-packaged uh, just pomegranate seeds, which are way more expensive than a pomegranate, and she just had no clue how to go about deseeding a pomegranate. And this huge thing, pomegranate, which is which ye is yields me about two cups or so of pomegranate seeds, is about cost me three forty nine. And if you buy a little like eight ounce thing of which is one cup of pomegranate seeds, it's often 
$5.99, $6.99, really expensive. So it's much cheaper to just buy the pomegranate if it's at your local market and de seed it yourself. So I wanted to first show you an easy way to de seed pomegranate. So basically, I've cut it in half horizontally. So there's the pomegranate, the, these are your ends. I've cut it in half this way. And then over a bowl, you just take a wooden spoon. I love wooden spoons. Can I just say that? Um, it's one of my favorite things. First of all, it's an old classic, and people so now use all these modern utensils, and you never have to worry about it scratching nonstick or any of that. I love wooden spoons. It's so multi-purpose. When I was a kid, um, my mom, visiting day was Sunday, and she would use the ends to twirl our hair into little curls. So I just love using wooden spoons. But Anyway, so you take your pomegranate, you put it over here, and with the back of your spoon, you just pound it. And you see the seeds just come flying out. Now, some of the pith, the white part, will come out. So what you're going to do is after you've gone through this whole thing, you rotate it, you have all the sides and they're out, what you do is you pour cold water into the bowl and all the white part, any pith that's there, will rise to the top. You just scoop out the white part, drain your pomegranate seeds, and you have your pomegranate, your pomegranate de-seeded. How easy is that? So next time, save some money. Don't buy the little jar of seeds and de-seed your pomegranate yourself. Okay. Sorry. So now we're going to get to today's recipe. So here we have some wheat berries. So I have just boiled the wheat berries in some water, some boiling water, about 30, 40 minutes. Uh, Depending what where you get your wheat berries, you can sometimes get them in two different forms. They'll be the whole wheat version, and they'll also be the ones that have been dehusked. Um, I always like the whole wheat version because that has all the bran and all the germ, so you're getting all the healthy uh, stuff that's there included. Um, with the whole wheat berries. Um, if you can't find whole wheat berries, I think barley and even quinoa would be a good substitute for this. But now we're going to go ahead and start our kid-friendly snack. So we're going to just add all of our ingredients. Um, I had sent out the recipe link that's already on the site. So we're going to go ahead and add everything. Wheat berries. Here you have your pomegranate seeds. That's a half cup. We've got two tablespoons of dried cranberry, two tablespoons of golden raisins. Um, I think it was a tablespoon, might be two. I have to go back to the rest of it. I think it was a tablespoon of sesame seeds, a quarter teaspoon of anise seed. If you can't find anise seed, um, you can substitute fennel seed. Fennel seed is going to be a little bit stronger, but it's a good substitute. A teaspoon of cinnamon. A quarter cup of sliced almonds that I've toasted, slivered almonds, sliced almonds, whichever ones you get is fine. And a quarter cup of sugar. So we have all of that, and we're just going to go ahead and stir it up until it's all thoroughly combined. So I did want to go over, though, what the Greek meaning, because each ingredient in Greek mythology means something else, and I wanted to go over that with you. So, the wheat symbolizes Demeter, which is the earth goddess, while the pomegranate seeds represent her daughter, Persephone, who's the queen of the underworld. Almonds were sacred to Aphrodite and raisins to Dionysus. Sesame seeds were said to open the door of consciousness. So there you have all of the meaning of your Kaliba in, in Greek mythology, as well as you already know the religious significance in Romania. So that's all thoroughly combined, and that's it. Literally, we're going to put it in a bowl, and now you put it in your bowl. It's all thoroughly combined. Okay, and then what we're going to do now is we garnish it with just a little bit of powdered sugar. 
a little bit of powdered sugar, and also grated chocolate or candy. So grated chocolate is the most common way they do it in Romania, the ones with the religious significance. And what they often do is they use a stencil or some kind of cutout of the cross of the Orthodox Church. And then so what they'll do is they'll put the chocolate in the shape of the cross so that, you know, you see it's it's a holy thing. But here I just have some grated dark chocolate. I like dark chocolate. So this one I use is a 70% cacao and dark chocolate has lots of health benefits. So that's great. And there you have it. You have your Kaliva, which uh, is a great whole grain snack, dessert. Um, it works as a great after school snack for kids. As I was promoting this, I said it was a kid friendly snack. And that's it. So whether you're watching this live or you're watching the replay, um, like I said, please let me know what spices, what uh, condiments are you really uh, would like to use, but you just can't find in your local area. I want to uh, provide a product that's going to be really, really useful to you. So let me know. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my page so you never miss a live. You can always get your notifications and definitely subscribe to my newsletter. There's a link right there on my Facebook page as well so that you never miss a single recipe and continue to try new things and taste the world. Have a great day.